Today I'm going to show you what's inside of your car's headlights and how it works. Now your car's headlights are responsible for lighting up the road ahead of you but also to tell other drivers that you're coming and where you're signaling. Now there are many different types of headlights. There are projector style headlights, there's reflector style headlights, seal beam headlights, LED and laser headlights. So we're going to take a look at the reflector housing and how it works. Now these headlights are reflector type and they're from the G35. You can see they're really cloud and hazed over. That's because they're constructed of a composite plastic material. We have a low beam and a high beam over here as well as a turn signal here and further inside of there a daytime running light. So we're going to take these apart so we can have a closer look at how it works. In the back here we have the sockets where the bulbs go into. We also have the daytime running light bulb here and the turn signal bulb that would sit in here. You can see that this whole thing here is adjustable although the adjustment is broken on this one and that's done through this little screw on this side here and this adjustment screw on that way. Now in order to open a typical headlight housing you usually have to put this in the oven and bake it and the butyl seal that's around here is what's going to soften up allowing you to separate this top lens from the rear part of the headlight that houses the reflector. However, my wife isn't going to allow me to put a headlight in the oven, so we're going to have to resort to some other means. And now I'm going to separate this clear housing from the base here, and you can see what's inside. And to separate the clear plastic from the reflector, you can just pop that off. And you can see this is sort of a tinted kind of chrome color. This is mostly there for styling. It doesn't really do any optical purpose. And here we have the clear headlight cover. And you can see this one's been pretty battered up and it's really hazed over over the last 15 years in service. Now you can restore these. You got to sand them down and then you can refinish them with some clear coat. And here we have the base of the headlight. You can see it is also made of plastic. Now on the sides here we have this characteristic channel that's going to lock in the lens when it goes on top of here. And it's usually held in with a butyl kind of glue that activates with heat. So if your headlight is seeing a lot of condensation it's typically due to a leak in between this channel here letting moisture in. Now this is a reflector style housing hence we have these two reflector bowls here one for the high beam and one for the low beam. Now this one is broken so it's kind of loose and flopping around but it is supposed to adjust its angle with this little screw that's inside of here and this one over here to adjust it higher or lower. And if you look closely on this little access hole conveniently located on the other side here you can see that as I turn the adjuster how this reflector is moving back. Now further up from that we have this other adjuster here and as I turn it you can see that it's going to adjust the position of the low beam. Now oddly enough inside of here we have some wiring. So this little guy looks like the grounding wire that's going to ground this side here and around the light bulb socket. So just undo the two screws to this magical box and we'll just take that out. I think this is some sort of relay for the HID system included on this vehicle. Here we have the HID socket. You can see it says this is going to work at very high voltage because these Xeon bulbs need some very high voltage in order to ignite the gas inside of here. So here we have the reflector housing and you can see it's made of just a shiny plastic but the shape of which is most important because it optimizes the amount of light coming out from these light bulbs. So here we've got a little diagram of how the inside of the headlight works. Over here I've got the reflector in a low beam situation and you can see we have these individual slats inside of here which comprise of different angles for which the light can bounce off and form the beam pattern. Now in a low beam situation we have the point source coming like this and everything is going to point downward towards the road and out of any oncoming driver's eye. Now if we move over to the high beam side whether it's a dual filament bulb that I drawn here or the separate bowl that we saw on that G35 lamp the individual slats are going to be pointed to angle the light coming from the high beam upward and light up trees and other objects further down the road. Now if your reflector bowl is not optimized for the focal point of that light source then you're going to have light bouncing all over up and down and that's what creates a glare above the low beam cutoff line. Now if we move over to a projector situation we have an elliptical reflector here that's going to focus all the light into this one point. Now at that point we have this cutoff shield here which is going to block some of that light that's going to go through the lens and above the cutoff line into this area here. Therefore your low beam light has a nice sharp sharp cut off here and it's dark above that and it doesn't blind other people. Now in the high beam situation the cutoff shield is going to be moved out of the way using a solenoid and that's going to allow all of the light from the focal point to continue through the lens and distribute itself above and below the cutoff line so you can see further down the road. Now in this particular setup with the cutoff shield moving off to the side the light itself doesn't change it doesn't get any brighter there is no secondary filament nor is there another bulb on the vehicle it's the same light source that is now distributed above and below the cutoff line. Now at the top here we have an HID reflector and each one of these little slats here represents a 
chrome piece that is angled at a particular angle relative to the bulb center. Light's going to come from the bulb center and go directly to that piece of reflector and reflect off at the exact angle to form a constructive beam pattern. Now if there wasn't any conformity to this reflector design, the light would just scatter all around the road, blind oncoming drivers, and put light everywhere else except where you need it focused on the road. And now on this side here we have the high beam and you can see it's got a slightly different reflector pattern. It does take a halogen style bulb instead of an HID and it's going to optimize the beam pattern to point slightly upward compared to the low beam which is going to point downward. That's going to allow you to illuminate road signs and other hazards and see a little bit further down the road. You mostly use that when there's nobody else on the road because it's pretty blinding. Now in some vehicles you'd integrate both the high beam and the low beam into one reflector and in those reflectors you might see a lot smaller sections of reflector. That's because some of them are going to be optimized for the low beam and some of them are going to be optimized for the high beam. Now because light bulbs don't effectively emit light out the front of them this way, they mostly emit light around the outsides, what these bulb caps do is capture all of that light and spread it evenly across the reflector so that most of that energy of that light is focused in terms of going to the reflector and not just wasted going straight out just like a tail light. Now tail light's got much lower illumination so having a bulb cap or an extensive reflector design isn't really required. Tail light bulbs also illuminate light in all directions including out the front a little bit more effectively than a headlight bulb. I'm just going to unscrew these shields here so we can have a closer look at the bulb cap and here we can see we have the holder for the bulb that secures it into place. Now, honestly I thought the inside of this bulb cap would be a little shiny like the outside is but this is how it fits inside of the bulb. You can see that the bulb is going to sit here where its focal point is going to be outside in this little space over here and that's going to allow light to escape out this side here and this side here. Now the top and the bottom isn't nearly as important. You can tell from the shape of the parabola here that it wants light to escape more out the sides as opposed to just up and down. And this is where we come to the huge debate between upgrading your halogen bulbs to HID or LED bulbs. You see when you stick an HID bulb into a halogen housing, not only does the brightness change but also the focal distance. You can see if for example if this is the brightest spot over here on the halogen bulb, the HID bulb is going to have it slightly shifted. Now what that's going to do is it's going to change the optics inside of the reflector. Now with an HID bulb the focal distance is going to change, let's say a little bit more forward. And and now suddenly the reflector inside of here is no longer optimized for the bulb that you have in there. Now in order to correct that you need to upgrade your housing to an HID reflector or better yet even an HID projector that can better handle the focal point and brightness of an HID bulb. Fun fact these are actually made of metal in order to absorb some of the heat that's coming off of this bulb because it gets really hot in here. Now not only are the reflectors optimized for HIDs but the entire reflector design itself is also optimized for the market. For example, this vehicle is for a left-hand drive, so the design of this reflector here is going to reduce glare on the driver's side headlight for oncoming traffic, but increase glare on the passenger side headlight so that you can see road signs. Now the beam pattern from those headlights are going to be biased towards the side that the vehicle is driving on. So for example, in a left-hand drive situation, you're going to have this asymmetrical pattern here that's going to skew the headlights towards the right side of the road in order to not blind any oncoming driver. In a projector situation is also asymmetrical but you can see that the light is much more focused giving you the illusion that it's more brighter. Now headlight beam patterns are governed by the ECE in Europe and DOT standards in North America. Now here I've got the ECE standard printed out here and you can see that it's going to take brightness readings at 25, 50 and 75 meters ahead of the vehicle to make sure that you could see oncoming objects along the side of the curb but also so that it doesn't pass this horizontal line which corresponds to the windshield line of oncoming vehicles so you don't blind them. You could barely make out the DOT certification mark on the bottom of this headlight. In order to demonstrate the effect of bulb geometry on the beam pattern, I've stuck an HID bulb inside of here and as I move the bulb outward you can see how the beam kind of scatters and goes all over the place. As I move it back inward it focuses its point in the center here. I can also play with the tilt of the bulb upward and downward. So just a small change in the bulb's location and geometry can make a huge change in the beam pattern that you see on the road. Now here we can see the effect of the composite headlight cover, especially this one that's all hazed up. It really scatters the light and reduces its light output. So here I've shoved the halogen bulb into the halogen high beam housing and you can see with the bulb push all the way in what the beam pattern looks like. As I pull the bulb outward you can see that it kind of disperses the same way that the HID bulb does. Finally we have the little turn signal housing. Now this is a pretty straightforward housing. It's got the little hole for the bulb here. If 
I take it apart here, you can see we have this little filter, which is going to filter out any amber light for the turn signal. And if I further take this apart, its reflector in here is much more primitive compared to the reflector for the halogen headlight, and that's because its light output is a lot less. It's just a shiny surface that doesn't really optimize it for any beam pattern, because you can't really blind anyone with your amber turn signals, can you? Now if you really wanted to go all out, you could make a really bright tail light bulb here by putting a halogen headlight bulb in it. So the next time you turn on your car's headlights, think of all these components that have to be precisely designed just so you could see driving down the road. Make sure you follow me on Instagram to find out what the next video is going to be. Subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to see more videos just like this one.